Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I am using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. For this video lesson, we are going to explore the structure of Xamarin Forms, define shared user interface or UI for Android and iOS, and create your first Xamarin Forms application. During the lesson, I'll be using some technical terms that you might not be familiar with. First is a web view. A web view is a view that display web pages inside your application. You can also specify HTML string and can show it inside your application using web view. Web view makes turns your application to a web application. Next is extensible application markup language also known as XAML. XAML is a declarative language. Specifically, XAML can initialize objects and set properties of objects using a language structure that shows hierarchical relationships between multiple objects and a backing type convention that supports extension of types. Then we have Software Development Kit or SDK. SDK is a collection of software development tools in one installable package. They facilitate the creation of applications by having a compiler, debugger, and perhaps a software framework. They are normally specific to a hardware platform and operating system combination. To create applications with advanced functionalities such as advertisements, push notifications, etc., most application software developers use specific software development kits. Xamarin Forms is a framework for creating cross-platform native mobile apps with c -sharp and XAML by using Visual Studio. Suppose you work for a national grocery store chain. The chain wants to expand their loyalty program with a mobile app. The new app allows one-touch dialing to the store and also pushes notifications about special offers when the user is at the store. The app therefore needs access to some hardware features. You've been tasked with identifying the technology and building a proof of concept. You identify Xamarin Forms as a likely technology choice. Xamarin Forms allows you to share code, share markup for creating a user interface or UI, and easily access hardware and platform-specific features, like the phone dialer and location services. Additionally, with Xamarin Forms you can make use of the C-sharp skills of the developers you already work with. Just a few reminders. For Windows user, make sure you have the mobile development with .NET workload installed in Visual Studio 2019 for Windows. While for Mac OS user, the standard Visual Studio 2019 for Mac installation includes everything you need to build mobile apps with Xamarin. Let's dig up more about Xamarin Forms. The pattern most often used for mobile app development is to develop twice once for Android and once for iOS. This involves dealing with not only separate SDKs, but altogether different languages and tool sets. Xamarin Forms allows you to work in one integrated development environment with one language. You create your UI once, and both iOS and Android use that UI definition, including the actions and events you code. Unlike some other cross-platform solutions, Xamarin Forms isn't rendered in a web view. Instead, internally it uses the Android SDK, or the iOS SDK, to create native controls for native performance. The following video is a content from Microsoft explaining the Visual Studio Tools for Xamarin. Visual Studio Tools for Xamarin takes advantage of the native SDKs on Android and iOS, helping developers save time by sharing code across multiple platforms. Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android sit above the native SDKs, allowing them to be accessed from C Sharp in Visual Studio. Because all development is being done in C Sharp, it's easy to share that single code base between apps on different platforms. In addition to the native SDKs, Visual Studio Tools for Xamarin allows developers to take advantage of the .NET framework. Above all of this sits Xamarin Forms. Whereas Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android help you share back-end code, 
Xamarin Forms makes it possible to share UI, so developers only need to define the look, feel, and behavior of their UI once. With Visual Studio Tools for Xamarin, developers can reach audiences across the iOS and Android platforms without doubling their work. What does Xamarin Forms offer? As we've seen, Xamarin Forms makes it easy to access common controls like buttons. Other common controls like text entry fields, labels, and date pickers are just as easy. But individual controls aren't enough to make a good platform for creating rich apps. Xamarin Forms also gives us an elaborate layout engine for designing our pages. You can have multiple page types for creating rich navigation types, like drawers. And a support for XAML and data binding, for more elegant and maintainable development patterns. Xamarin Essentials Core Xamarin Forms makes the user interface easier to manage. But Xamarin Essentials handles many of the common needs of mobile apps that don't have to do with the UI. That means that after you've added the Xamarin Essentials NuGet package, you can access things like the GPS, the accelerometer, and battery and network states. There are dozens of sensors and services common to mobile development that Xamarin Essentials gives us convenient access to. Visual Studio's new project templates for Xamarin Forms apps all include the Xamarin Essentials NuGet package automatically. We are now ready to get started and create our first Xamarin Forms. With Visual Studio and the mobile development workload installed, we have what we need to get started building mobile apps. Even the free community edition of Visual Studio works. To create a new project, open Visual Studio 2019 and select Create a New Project dialog box. Now go to search bar and type mobile. This will list down all projects that uses Xamarin. Then select the mobile app, Xamarin Forms, project. You'll then ask to enter a name and location for your new project. The next dialog box has a few starter app templates from which to choose. We have Flyout. It's a template with a side menu that can be collapsed on a small screens. The next one is a tab template. It uses tabs to navigate between section. Then last one is a blank. It's an empty app with a single initial screen. But for the following activities, we are going to use blank template because we'll be adding our own custom navigation in pages. As you'll see in our first exercise, even the blank app template comes with a starter welcome to Xamarin.Forms. Type page, so it's not quite completely blank. This is also the dialog where you will pick the platforms you wish to support with your Xamarin Forms app. Let's now discuss the structure of the solution of our project. You will notice that there are three projects created in the solution. They all have the same root name, but two of them have a suffix, .ios or Android. Those projects compile to executable programs, one for each platform. These are sometimes called head projects. The third project is used by the executables, and it's where we'll put all the code and markup we want them to have in common. In a typical Xamarin Forms solution, almost all of our work will happen in this third project. Let's take a closer look at the head projects. You can see that iOS and Android have different basic constructions. For instance, iOS has a main.cs and an app delegate.cs, but Android has a main activity.cs. The reason they're different is that the iOS project's construction uses the same building blocks as any iOS project, including Objective C or Swift projects. The Android project uses the same building blocks as a Java or Kotlin Android project. Fundamentally, these are just an Android app and an iOS app, using Xamarin.iOS and Xamarin.Android, respectively, to expose their APIs as C-sharp classes. Let us examine more about the structure of solution. First we the solution node the source code is organized within a single solution. 
There are multiple, related projects, including a shared project and a project for each supported platform. Next is shared code. This is the .NET standard class library. It's referenced by each platform-specific project. Then .NET and NuGet references. This is the list of references used by the shared library. Notice that it includes a subset of the .NET libraries. Then application definition new Xamarin Forms projects include a class that derives from the application class. This class is responsible for presenting the UI. When you create a project in Visual Studio, this file will be named app.xaml.cs and is nested under app.xaml. And last is head projects. These are the platform specific projects, one for each platform we are building an app for. These projects create the actual applications you deploy and each references the shared code and the Xamarin Forms NuGet package. Each one will call its own Xamarin Forms .init method to create the initial app screen. As I mentioned earlier, a blank template is not quite blank. It has a default content. This image shows the initial content of main page.xaml. It contains frame, labels, span, and other XAML code. Now this image shows what it looks like if we run the app on a mobile phone or to an emulator. There are two ways to run the app. First using an emulator. It will allow you to test and view your app. The only downside is that emulator consumes big parts of your computer memory. Second is using a real mobile phone. It runs faster and eats less memory. But if you want to try your application to different versions of Android, you definitely needed the emulator. You just need to install an API for your target Android version. To configure and connect your mobile phone to Visual Studio, please refer to my other video lesson. Just a quick recap before I end the video. Xamarin Forms provides a way to create apps for iOS and Android devices without having to write those apps once in Java and once in Swift. We've seen that with Xamarin Forms, almost all the code that makes up our app, including our user interface code, can be written once and applies to both platforms and minimizes development time. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!